When I was in the Western animation community, I noticed a trend that was occurring in not only animation, but in media as we know it. Since 2010, more and more shows have retained an ongoing story, and the once popular episodic formula seemed to be a lot less common. Many embrace these new ongoing shows for their larger than life stories and expanded characters, but there was one particular person who I saw that actually thought the episodic formula was superior. This got me to think about the concept of continuity, how it affects the media we consume, not just television, and whether this trend of serialization is actually better than the episodic formula we are so used to. Before we talk about whether this trend in continuity is good or not, we need to ask ourselves what continuity is, and why this trend happened to begin with. Continuity is described as the unbroken and consistent experience or operation of something over a medium of time. In terms of TV shows, it means that events that happen in the show are ongoing and constant, almost as if the show remembers the events alongside its audience. When a TV show contains a lot of continuity, it is known as being serialized. Some popular serialized cartoons are Steven Universe, Adventure Time, and Avatar. Other types of serialized shows would be dramas like BBC Sherlock and Stranger Things, and the majority of anime also follows this trend. This is the opposite of an episodic show, where the status quo is reset every installment. Cartoons that follow this format are usually comedies, such as Spongebob, Flintstones, and Family Guy. Other shows that follow this formula are Seinfeld and Law & Order. Seems simple enough to understand, if the show has ongoing stuff, it's serialized, and if it doesn't, it's episodic, right? Well, there's one more important thing to know about serialization and episodicness. It's that continuity isn't a black and white switch, it's a spectrum. Many shows can do varying levels of continuity, and there's a certain level of continuity one must be in order to be considered serialized. On the forest end of the spectrum, we have true episodic shows. These shows have absolutely nothing that connects each episode to one another besides the characters in basic plot. Absolutely everything is reset in a purely episodic series. This kind of show is practically non-existent nowadays, and even back then it was pretty rare, as mostly episodic shows would typically introduce new characters to their show. The next level of continuity of the show are mostly episodic shows, where while you can still watch any episode without really missing anything, there are slight changes to the status quo, such as a new character and certain events being remembered by characters. This can be seen with things like The Amazing World of Gumball, Phineas and Ferb, and The Loud House. Slightly closer to the scale of continuity, we have half episodic, half serialized shows, in which, while some episodes are pretty episodic, others do rely a bit on things that happened in previous episodes, and it's the first type on this scale to feel like you actually miss something if you watch randomly. A famous example of this is the show My Little Pony, in which, while most episodes are episodic, there are occasionally ongoing arcs and season finales that do focus a lot on continuity. Lastly, we have what is known as serialized shows, which heavily focus on continuity, are intended to be watched in order, and will be increasingly confusing if you watch a random episode without context, which I've already mentioned examples of. There is one more type of serialization, and that is when each season has an overarching plot, but you can watch any season in any order which reaps the benefits of both mediums. This is pretty popular on reality shows like American Idol or The X Factor. One common misconception when it comes to all of this is that the level of continuity a show has directly correlates to the amount of stakes and seriousness. Serialized shows are serious with high stakes, and episodic shows are lighthearted slice of life comedies. However, this isn't always the case. One of the first western serialized shows, as told by Ginger, was just about a girl living her ordinary life, and House MD, a very serious medical drama, is completely episodic and can be watched in any order. Now that we know what episodic and serialized mean, I think that it is important to discuss the pros and cons for both styles of storytelling when it comes to TV shows. The main positive when it comes to episodic shows is that you can watch any episode at any time without missing much. This gives your show a lot more accessibility and widespread appeal, especially back in the day when being able to watch every episode in order was incredibly difficult to do. Another pro for episodic shows is that they can run for as long as you want. Think about the most financially successful shows on television. The Big Bang Theory, Seinfeld, The Tonight Show, Family Guy, they're all episodic shows and are able to amass over 20 seasons, which is impressive. Speaking of which, another perk about episodic shows is that, if there is a bad episode, you can just skip it without majorly affecting the show, and if the show goes downhill through seasonal rot, you'll be safe knowing that you can just stop watching the show there without having to worry about unsolved mysteries and plot points or how they're ruined later. However, there are some reasons why people will prefer serialized shows. The most important reason is that serialized shows are allowed to tell much larger stories in ways episodic shows, and even movies, cannot. Even a 12, 22 minute long episode season is still twice as long as the average movie. 
Another positive when it comes to serialized shows is that it gives you something to look forward to. After watching an episode, you'll probably have a lot of thoughts on it and what's gonna happen next in a way episodic shows cannot deliver. This is often why serialized shows tend to have much larger and more prominent fandoms as it gives the show a bit of an audience loyalty, as they are more likely to watch every episode on your show, which is great for ratings. Plus, fandoms are more likely to buy merchandise of the shows they love compared to the average viewer, which gives them money to the show. Plus, with the rise of streaming services, serialized shows have become a lot more accessible, meaning that there's more of an incentive to watch one over an episodic show. So we talked about continuity and media when it comes to TV shows, but that's not the end of the discussion. There is one medium that we should talk about when it's in continuity and storytelling, and that's video games. Why video games specifically? Well, it's because the topic of continuity between games changes significantly, and that all has to do with money. You see, when you watch television, you're probably playing a monthly fee, meaning that if you watch a new episode or season, you're probably paying the same amount, and the only extra cost is time. With video games, on the other hand, each game has its own cost, so if you want to see more of the story after you beat the video game, you'll have to actively buy the next video game, and trust me, video games aren't cheap. This heavily skews the continuity argument in favor of episodic video games against serialized ones. This is especially the case when one of the major pros when it comes to serialized shows, that being that they get to larger stories, no longer applies because video games can be as long as you want. For example, all the Persona games are episodic and can be played in any order, but are immensely long, being about 100 hours each, about 272 episodes if there were 22 minute episode shows. And that's not the only issue when it comes to serialized games. You know how serialized shows have become a lot more accessible with the rise of streaming services? Well, it's the opposite when it comes to video games. Because video games have a limited stock and old consoles become obsolete, old video games have become increasingly more and more difficult to legally obtain, especially when scalpers mark up their prices to ridiculous levels. So unless video games care enough about re-releasing old games, if you want to play something like Professor Layton from the beginning, you have no choice but to fork up thousands of dollars or resort to piracy. However, I don't think serialized video games are inherently bad, but I do think there is a good way and a bad way to make a serialized game. The good way to make a serialized game series is to write a complete story in each game so that, theoretically, the series can end there, and make each following game an optional addition to that story. I've seen Danganronpa, Professor Layton, and the majority of Ace Attorney games do this, and I find it really effective. It gives players a satisfying story with the beginning, middle, and end, but if they want to see extra adventures with the characters they love, they have the choice of buying its sequels. The bad way of making serialized video games is having its sequels be necessary in the completion of the story. Although much rarer than the former, I have unfortunately seen this type of video game twice, that being Zero Escape, Virtue's Lost Reward, and The Great Ace Attorney. Both of these games had massive cliffhangers at the end, and for The Great Ace Attorney 1, I was unable to consume the second game at the time because it wasn't fan translated yet. Not only is this bad because you have to pay an extra $40 to experience the rest of the story, but video games take years upon years to come out, and for these games, it took 6 and 2 years to come out respectively. Even worse, because Zero Time Dilemma's budget had been cut, a lot of the questions that were supposed to be answered in that game remained unanswered. So not only is this type of serialization financially predatory, it's also incredibly risky, as many things can go wrong when making a new video game. So, what do you think? I wanted to make more general videos that aren't focused on any specific video game or cartoon, so that more of my fans will be able to enjoy them. What type of storytelling do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. As always, I'll see you again in the unforeseen future, and I hope this video comes out this Friday. Uh, bye!